Okay, yep, recording is on, all yours. All right, perfect. So welcome everybody. This is the seventh call for the governance working group and uh, happy to see everybody getting together and excited to go through our agenda today. So starting out, we'll, we'll go right down the road. We normally go down with our stand-ups. Um, so we'd love to know kind of an idea of what everyone's working on, any blockers, and what's going to be happening over the next week, and a little bit of what happened over the, the past week. So who would like to start out with a stand-up? I can start. Um... So I know we're trying to up the number of participants we have um, in our survey. So I actually included it in um, Blockstack's April newsletter yesterday. So I think that should reach a few new folks. Um, and I also tweeted it out uh, on Twitter last night. So we should be seeing an uptick from that in our responses soon. Awesome. That's great to hear. And then um, any any blockers or anything stopping you from what you, what needs to be done this week? Um, no blockers. I think uh, it would be good to discuss on this call um, how we want to go about writing a blog or an update on the work that we've been doing. I think it would be great to sort of showcase all of the research and the great discussions we've been having to the broader community. But we can um, go into that a little later. Uh, good morning. Sorry about uh, being dropped out. Welcome back, Philip, and and definitely. So thank you for that, Jenny. We'll, we've got that as an agenda item. We'll get right back into that. And then uh, right now, Philip, we're we're just going through our standups here. Did you have anything you wanted to add from the last week, or any blockers, anything like that? Uh, time. <laughs> Time. It's a lot to learn, but um, advancing and advancing. Excellent. And I, and I agree with you there. One thing I've commonly said is time is our most valuable asset. So we definitely got to figure out the best way to use it. And um, hopefully, you know, as we're going through things and we're, we're streamlining things, that gets a little bit easier for everybody. I'm going to jump in and just do my, my stand up real quick. Um, biggest thing between last week and this week is really more GitHub management on my end. Um, I need to kind of finish up and, and polish an update for last week. And we're looking at the, I was looking at the, re, uh, the repos that we have set up and um, talking to Lane a little about this. And I think we're going to remove the survey repo and integrate that into a folder in resources. Um, so that'll just require some update of some documentation and a few other links and other areas. But um, unless somebody sees a, a major blocker with that, I think that's the direction I'm headed down next. And um, otherwise, I don't have too much to add. Is there anybody else who would like to do a stand-up? Jason, I can, I can do mine now, or I don't know if you wanted to wait because I've got a bunch of stuff on mine. It's up to you. Sure, I'd say I'd say let's go ahead and go for it. I, I I think we're all waiting to hear the results from your list anyway. All right, so I, I posted this um, yesterday on the GitHub issue, and I did just update it now. I just double checked the survey responses. So uh, we now have uh, thirty nine total. It ticked up a little since yesterday, um, so that's that's great. I think that that's um, uh, really really exciting to see and really encouraging. So thank you, Jenny, uh, for your update for for the newsletter. Um, for mentioning in the newsletter and also to everyone else who's helped get the word out. Um, I would still love to see us get to 100. We can talk about what we might need to do to get there, but this is like, um, you know, we're, we're almost halfway there. So that's really exciting. Um, next is the one-on-one -on -one interview notes. So I finished publishing those over the past couple of days. They're in, the, the, the PR has been merged. So they live inside the resources uh, repository on GitHub and there's a link um, in the master readme inside the resources. So if you haven't taken a look at those yet, please do. Uh, thank you for posting the link, Jason. Um, governance proposal, I don't have an update on this this week. Um, I think uh, I gave an update last week, which is that I had moved over the most interesting parts of it, uh, or I should say copied them over to um, GitHub issues in the new proposals repository new as of last week and some people did come in and post some comments and questions there so uh, thank you to those who did 
um, that's sort of where this stands. I think that, you know, as last week, um, the kind of outstanding part here is figuring out things like foundation governance. Um, and we'll get an update, I'm sure, from Brittany on, on where that stands on the PBC side. Um, the biggest things I've been working on are number one, a standard operating procedures document. Um, Jason, I don't know if you can quickly throw in a link to the, uh, the PR, which is number 23 in the uh, PM repository. Sorry, a lot of abbreviations there. Uh, I can throw it in in a sec if, if you don't get to it first. Um, thank you. So yeah, take a look at this if you haven't yet. It, um, so this was an idea that was originally proposed by Brittany, I think. And it was that, you know, as the StacksGov initiative grows and as it becomes more complex and more people uh, are contributing to it, it would be very helpful to record basically best practices or standard operating procedures. And so I started with a set of, um, I think, three things, right? The first is how to run these calls, including setting them up ahead of time, uh, running the call itself, and then the stuff that has to happen after the call's over. The second thing was the regular updates. Um, and the third thing was just more generally how to manage the, um, the GitHub organization, what the different repositories are for, and also a bit about this, um, the chat group on Discord and the uh, forum on Discourse. Um, so yeah, so please take a look. Like I did my best to sort of do a brain dump there, but um, please comment, propose additions, corrections, et cetera, as usual. Um, and uh, I guess we're just waiting for that to be reviewed by a couple people before we kind of merge that in and make it canonical. And then the final update from my side is the main deliverable I'm working on right now is a proposal for how the uh, stack improvement proposal process could be done, the SIP process. And I've been doing some reading and homework and thinking about how Ethereum and Zcash and Bitcoin and some other projects run their respective asterisk IP, right? EAPs in the case of Ethereum or ZIPs in the case of Zcash or BIPs in the case of Bitcoin, how they happen and, and, and you know, how these, um, uh, how those procedures apply or don't apply to our community and how we might want to improve that process or change it. So I don't have anything ready to share yet, but I'm sure I will within the next few days. And uh, if you have ideas or comments, um, please do share them now. Otherwise, I will share that when it's ready and I look forward to hearing other people's thoughts. That's it for me. Thanks for listening. Awesome. Thank you for that, Lane. And I made some good notes on that as we were going through. So we'll be able to, to post that up when we're done with everything here. Is there anybody else who would like to do a stand up? Jason, would it be helpful if I take notes while you're moderating? I know that it's a bit tricky to do both at the same time. I didn't think to ask this before the call. <laughs> um, you know, we, we can do our thing where we just compare them side by side again, too. So far, I'm hitting that mute button so I don't hurt everybody with the uh, keyboard noises in the background, but I, but I think we're doing okay. Oh, thanks. Awesome. So if we don't have any other stand-ups, one of the, the next items on the agenda we were going to move on to was the community survey. So aside from what you just gave us there in the stand-up, is there anything you'd like to add to that, Lane? About the survey specifically? Uh, yes. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think I've mentioned this a few times already, and I, I won't repeat myself too much, but I think the question we should be asking ourselves is kind of, what do we want to do with the results? Um, at what point do we want to begin peeking at them? I, I haven't really looked at the results recently. I was kind of waiting for the number to, to keep ticking up. So I leave this as an open question to everyone like, um, do people want me to begin sharing results? Do we want to wait for some point? How do we want to share those results? Those, those sorts of open questions. Excellent. And we'll just give that a few seconds to see if anybody has any comments. Do we have any, any timing for, for the, the results of the survey? I mean, yeah. Yeah, so that's a good when question. When we need that uh, in order to, to process that and, and to have some, some, some conclusions. And yeah, because, so. Yeah, because the, the more time, of course, is better. But, uh, so our initial plan, uh, when I say our, this is just my discussion with, um, with, with Brittany about the like account that this is hosted on because it's a paid type form account. The idea was that um, it would run until roughly the end of this month. Uh, so that gives us about three more weeks. Um, 
I kind of thought that would probably be sufficient. So if, if people feel otherwise, then um, you know, let us know what you think. So up to the end of the next week. So we have to do an effort to get more more people in uh, answering the. Uh, so probably the best way is to do a personalized um, um, incentive. <laughs> talk to each one, you know, ah, did you fill up the survey? Did you fill up the survey? That's a one, one to one work. Probably that's the best way now to do. Um, so I think we'd get pretty good distribution from um, including it in the April newsletter. Um, that goes out to a pretty large email list. And from what I understand, that would be going out this week. So I'd probably wait on personal incentives um, and see what the results are from, from the newsletter first. Uh, but yeah, that could be a good route to go um, if we're getting toward the end of that three week period that Lane mentioned. All right, excellent. And if we, um, if we don't have anything else to add on the survey, our next agenda item is actually going to be talking a little bit about this blog post idea. Did you want to give a little extra information on that, Jenny, or do you have anything to add? I know we were talking about it as a, a way to kind of summarize what the group has done so far. I was curious if you had any other thoughts. Um, no other major thoughts. I guess I should ask you if everyone feels ready um, to, to do that or if we want to wait until we hit another milestone. Um, I just know that the, well, personally, I think the, the work that we've been doing is, is really interesting and um, putting it in a blog post would be great for the, the wider community, um, especially if we're, we're wanting to get participation from other community members, this could be a good way to go about it. Um, as far as like how we want to structure the update, what we want to report on, I think that's, that's totally up to, to this group. Um, so any initial thoughts that we have on that? Um, we can discuss and the the process of getting the blog post up I think would be would be fairly simple just uh, as long as we can draft something um, and send that over to Mitchell uh, shouldn't be a problem beyond that. Any thoughts uh, initially everyone? Um, I think it's a great idea. I think this is something that we had been discussing doing from from way back um, and and especially, for just, and I, I think this is probably part of your goal, Jenny. Uh, tell me if you disagree, but just just spreading the word, just just letting you know a broader set of people um, understand the the work that's happening and why it's important. Um, so yeah, great idea. I just like I guess I'm the question I'm kind of asking myself is, what is the core message? What is the call to action? What is the like the one or two things that we want this post to communicate? Because we're doing a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, I think the initial um, motivation was that this would be, uh, this would help with distribution for the survey. Um, and then as I thought about it, I also thought it could be a good opportunity to showcase all of the different um, sets of expertise we have in the group. So I know that everyone is coming from a different, a different background um, and has their own uh, sort of personal interest in governance. And I mean, I was always very impressed with the initial discussion that we had in, in the governance working group. Um, and, you know, for example, last week we had Harold give that great presentation on the research that he's done, um, showcasing how valuable it has been to have the perspectives of so many different community members um, is something that I think is important to show maybe to the community members who are sort of interested, but maybe haven't like pulled the trigger on, on participating just yet because governance is such a nebulous issue. And um, so that that was another um, motivation that I had for doing this, just showing everyone that you can get involved um, regardless of what your background is um, and that everybody who is interested in the, the success of the BlockStack ecosystem has a stake in the work that we're doing. Excellent. Yeah. And just to throw my, my two cents in there as well, I was um, talking to the Corona Tracker group a little bit. And as they're getting ready to kind of scale up their idea, one of the questions that came up was, hey, what, what is Blockstack doing with governance? 
Um, so it would be nice to have a resource like that outside of GitHub to kind of point people to that has a nice little summary and everything else. And and speaking of, I mean, should we open this as possibly an, an issue with some talking points or a chance for people to comment? Or what do you think is the best engine for getting this um, drafted up? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, if that is, you know, one of our standard operating procedures, I think we could make that work. Um, it could it could probably grow go faster if we crowdsourced um, a bunch of material from this group and, and other community members. So I'm personally very open to how we want to go about doing this. Um, just wanted to get a, a temp check today on um, the way that everyone wanted to approach it. Jenny, would you have me? No, sorry, sorry. Ask, ask about timing. Um, given you know that there's a connection to the survey and stuff here, do you have a sense that this needs to happen over the next week, or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, whatever the group is comfortable, um, if this is going to help with survey distribution, I'd probably say sooner rather than later. But I know that um, Wayne, we're, you know, on, on a timeline um, and working on a bunch of things. So I didn't want to add on to the, the workload that we already have. Um, but if this is something that we can make easy um, as far as like submitting thoughts um, to the GitHub repo um, and collecting that and turning that into to a workable draft, then, um, you know, I, I'd encourage us to do it. But it really depends on on whether we feel comfortable, or whether this is the right time, and, and whether we have the capacity to do it. Well, probably the, 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 the summary of the of what we are doing is, uh, is a list of questions that we, we want to answer. So that's why we, it's a way to explain that uh, that's that's why we have a survey uh, and this is a moment to participate because uh, it's a moment to materialize that uh, that those ideas so probably it's a good idea and also to participate uh, you know, to try to answer these questions and, and there's no definite uh, answer yet uh, what we're thinking of so th that doubt and that um, ask for help and and participation that's uh, that's a nice uh, call for action Still, the, is, we still have the time to, to do that. I know that I also um, put together a list of questions that were raised in the group initially. And many of those questions have been answered. And I've been meaning to get to that as a forum post, but I'm happy to throw those things into the um, into an issue into an issue on github great yeah i think that um you know i, I love this idea of uh, crowdsourcing some of this content together and, and you know making sure that we highlight what's important to the community and what other people might want to know so happy to contribute there however um i can Uh, perfect. So just kind of looking over that topic in general, we'll kind of take that to GitHub and, and see what we can start crowdsourcing for ideas, because that right there sounds like we've, we've got the bare bones of it. We just got to put it all together. So that sounds good to me. And um, is there any other thoughts or any anything anyone would like to share on that one before we move on to the next one? Um, no, I, I guess as a, a next step um, that I can take on, I can um, post some questions and some topic ideas to GitHub and maybe that'll make it easier for folks to um, drop in their comments. But I can, uh, I can start on that very soon. So thanks everyone for your contributions there. Awesome, thank you for that. And um, next up on our agenda, we actually have the Stacks Foundation update. So I believe that'll be coming from you, Brittany. What, what do you have to share with us this week? Sure, thanks. Um, yeah, so we've uh, we've talked to um, our tax team um, who helps like determine, um, you know, like structure and what may work best. So uh, where we're at now is that um, we've narrowed down since most of the operations will be happening in the U.S. Uh, we're going to ex we're exploring a U.S. foundation. Um, now with a U.S. foundation, there are um, a few 
uh, different types. So probably everyone's familiar with like a 501c3. Uh, that's like a charitable organization. Um, Zcash, for example, they have a 501c3. Uh, but there are some other foundations that can exist. Um, so there's a C6, a C7, and a C4. And those are kind of like more like um, industry organizations. So like the American Bar Association, Association is a um, you know industry nonprofit. So, uh, really, the main distinction between these types of organizations is how they receive funding and the types of activities that they can do. So, when we were speaking with um, the folks on the tax side, you know, if we're exploring the route of a, a not-for-profit, um, you know, will donations be coming in from community members, or will uh, we be using some other type of funding? Uh, to fund the business. So like that's a key question. Another key question is around um, uh, you know what types of activities the organization can do. So if we are giving out things like grants um, or hosting fellowships or even a program like app mining, um, how will that impact our status and whether we can operate in that way? Since some of these things are relatively new, uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, you know we want to make sure and get like an expert opinion. Um, so that we are like abiding by all of the requirements, um, but with the knowledge that um, some of our consensus mechanisms in BlockStack are pretty novel. So for example, like our stacking mechanism, um, the foundation will be uh, taking over a large portion of the stack's treasury. And so it would be eligible to earn um, rewards by stacking. Uh, so maybe those BTC rewards could actually be used to fund operations um, so that it'll be a self-sufficient organization without having to seek any other uh, sources of funding initially. Um, but with that, does that count as income? Will that impact um, whether the status would be lost as a charitable organization? Um, so those are sort of the questions that are being explored. But, uh, you know, eliminating the Singapore Foundation as the potential or some of the other international foundations was like a key um, learning for us. Uh, and, you know, like I said, we learned that by talking to peers. You can see it in the notes that I posted around our conversation with Algrand. Um, so I think the, the benefits of doing a U.S. is that there aren't as many restrictions around, um, you know, we would have to have an offshore entity. We would have to have board meetings offshore. People would have to fly offshore in order to attend board meetings. A lot of um, things that I saw is very limiting in how we can even think about a board if it requires people to travel or travel internationally multiple times a year. Um, so for us, it's like, how do we be as um, inclusive of our community as possible? How do we uh, think globally, even though we will have an organization based in the US? And how do we make sure that um, as the organization grows and evolves, it's not limited in, in what it can achieve uh, for the ecosystem? So um, I can, uh, you know, sort of the next steps, I guess, with all of this is um, we have a conversation with Deloitte uh, later today, um, and they're going to help provide some outlines around a C3 versus a C4 versus a C6 and some guidance on which of those will make sense um, to allow us to do all the activities that I kind of outlined. And then uh, with that, we'll be drafting a, uh, per, like a application for that type of organization. So that's something I love to share with the community here. Um, like I said, we've been working with outside, uh, but we've been sharing all of the, everything that's been created thus far through this group. Um, through the proposal, uh, we'll share some of the survey feedback, all of that stuff as part of that application process. So, and that's a place where I see getting uh, feedback from this group will be really helpful. Um, so yeah, so I don't know if there's any questions on that. I'm happy to talk through or uh, like I said, just keep you guys in the loop as we progress through these stages of understanding. Yes, th thank you kindly for that. It's um, some exciting stuff in the way of um, finding a means for the foundation to become self-sufficient. Um, I like the idea of, of, of leveraging uh, what we already have with, uh, like you said, the, the very novel uh, consensus algorithm with, with POX. Um, 
also the 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 public utility uh, path that um Blockstack has already paved um is this a sound like a, a viable um means uh, so attaching a, a a governance specific blockchain um as a as a mechanism for for um self sufficiency Um, so you're asking about uh, the mechanisms for the blockchain for self-sufficiency. I think that was the question. So yeah, it would be just the you know the normal stacks blockchain. I don't think PBC would be able to earn uh, BTC rewards because of the way that it's structured as a for-profit. Um, I think that uh, that's the assumption that we've made. Uh, that may change, but for the foundation, um, it would uh, potentially qualify to to do stacking. So that's something that we are waiting to get confirmation on, but that's kind of the hunch we got. So um, I can have like a more firm answer on that uh, after yeah. our next conversations. Yeah, that the, the sounds like an, an excited um, a path. Um, also down the line, um, app chains, uh, maybe a, a chain specific for governance as, a, as a, another potential means if it, if it is viable. Um, yeah. So yeah, so some exciting stuff. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And I know app chains have come up on some of the business model um, working groups as well in discord. So if you have thoughts on that, like that's, um, I know there's been a lot of people thinking about that too. So thanks for mentioning that. Thanks for the update, Brittany. I, I had a, I don't know if it's a question or a thought, I guess I could kind of phrase it either way. Um, I guess I'll, I'll call it a thought. So, uh, two sides of a coin here, right? On the one hand, I think that the self-sustainability is really exciting. And I think that um, the fact that uh, POX gives a potential route to that is uh, is really, really novel and unique and exciting. Um, I'm just sort of beginning to, I'm just sort of sorting out in my head all the kind of possibilities, but I do think that there's a risk as well. And that's kind of what I want to highlight here super briefly and get other people's thoughts on. Um, my perspective uh, on one of the things that I think a lot of other crypto foundations have done very poorly is a lack of accountability. And I mean, you, you probably, if you guys have read any of the stuff I've written, you, you, you understand by now that like accountability is something that I care and think a lot about. Um, and in particular, in the pre-crypto world, foundations, if you think about them in an abstract sense, they're, um, you know, these organizations that do the things that Brittany was describing, they give grants, they sponsor research, et cetera, but they're usually accountable to donors, right? So there's a group of people or organizations that they have to go to every so often, typically it's an annual process and raise funds from, and what we've seen in the crypto foundations is that because they're able to like mint their own money or be self-sustainable, that avenue of accountability gets shut off. And that actually leads to a lot of problems. A lack of accountability tends to lead to just, let's call it suboptimal behavior on the part of the foundations. So I just wanted to, to plant this seed, get people thinking about, uh, not, not that, not that self-sustainability is bad necessarily, but that in its absence, in the absence of relying upon donors, we need other accountability mechanisms, right? So what could those look like? That's great. Yeah, I think that that's like a, a really good point to bring up and something that um, we want to be mindful of and aware of. I think, uh, you know, some of the industry associations, um, those require paying members in order to exist. So, you know, that's kind of the, the accountability mechanism. And then if it is a 501c3, um, donations have to be a certain portion of um, operating budget has to be through uh, a large number of individual donors or like, you know, um, uh, company donors. So, yeah, I think those kind of loops are built in there. But I think foundations have like a three year grace period in which they can achieve those things. Um, but I like the idea of how do we remain accountable even without some of these requirements in these foundations. So I appreciate you highlighting that. I have another question or another consideration. Uh, sorry, this is Dan. Um, related to like the the Justin's son takeover of Steam, um, give, and given that that the Stacks Foundation would have control over large treasury and and be able to, if we end up doing some kind of vote voting on chain or whatever, whatever the governance mechanism and and. Uh, ends up being like how do how does how do some of these organizational structures prevent um, 
I guess I guess this goes back to Lane's accountability. How do we how do we maintain the accountability in some of these governance structures? I guess is, is, is might be just repeating Lane's concern. <clears throat> um, how do we avoid the Justin Sun thing on Steam or something similar? I know it's not exactly the same because uh, Justin bought a company, um, but that controlled a huge amount of uh, Steam tokens. But uh, there's something to also keep in the back of your mind. Yeah, if I could just add on to what you're sharing, Dan, thank you for sharing that thought. This is, I don't know if this is technically the right term or not, but what I've heard people refer to this as a lot is capture. How do you avoid capture? And, and it's a little easier to capture a company, like you're saying, because you can kind of buy its shares maybe than a foundation, but there are other like more insidious forms of capture that can happen. And so I do think that this is like a very important topic. And I think that accountability and transparency are two defense mechanisms. There's probably others we could talk about. Yeah, I mean, I would love, uh, you know, to get feedback from this group or, or things that you've found on this and seen this. I have not done as um, much exploration into kind of like the ways to create <laughs> um, uh, resistance against those. So I, I think that this, that would be really helpful to, to explore that with this group here. Um, and Elaine, it sounds like you've done a lot of thinking and Dan, I think um, to your point, like looking out the examples, uh, especially the most recent ones of what's what happened there and maybe where uh, it went wrong. Um, and I don't know if they've done like retrospectives on how that could have been changed or things they wish they would have known, but all of those learnings I think would be really, really valuable to us as we're thinking about this. I think these are great topics that we should include in the blog posts that we're talking about because they're super timely and relevant. <laughs> Uh, this um this this kind of reminds me of uh, something I learned in uh, actually in the joining a meeting with Jenny with the game theorist. Um, it's a slightly different uh, topic, but I think it may still um, apply to this this accountabil accountability question. Um, the game theorist had, had referenced how important integrity is in in uh, the blockchains, which uh, I, I think a lot of us feel we we have in in regards to um, all the things that have already been built out by um, the you know PBC in terms of uh, code push for for the blockchain and and you know things coming in the future with app chains and a lot of different other possibilities business model wise that that add a lot of integrity to 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 this blockchain that others don't have that can um uh dissuade from the only incentive being to to game game network um uh, th this accountability question um uh, brings to mind uh, some possibilities of of uh building in uh this type of integrity into the governance system to um broaden the donors um uh, broaden the, the the breadth of 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 uh, interested donors uh, to to Lane's point about how that that increases uh, accountability um, in in the way of uh, important things like uh, ecological sustainability going into the future, um, even addressing some things with uh, business models that are um, uh, that the community is privy to because of 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 work. Uh, being done by folks like us in terms of you know what kind of business models those are. Uh, um, uh, as it relates to ecological sustainability, um, paradigm shifts in, in data uh, collection and, and consumption, I think all of these can be um, added layers of integrity specific to governance uh, uh, entities that um, can can broaden the, the breadth of, of interested donors um, to, to, to Lane's point of accountability and, and donors. I, excuse me. Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's amazing. And you know, looking at the the opportunity we have here as we're kind of thinking through these are these are great examples. I mean, just like Jude did the uh, blog post on some of the common smart contract issues, we could easily look at what um, other governance issues have had, and even with the Steam community, the way they've kind of migrated to this Hive community and some of the successes and failures in that as well is really fascinating to look at. And I know one of the things that's come up for me in the past too is um, having no main one entity able to make decisions um, in, in kind of a way that uh, the, we have two keys to turn the nuke. That would be the phrase that, that I think of in, in a way that, you know, there might be some check and balance procedures that we can think of that, that'll make more sense in the long run as well. 
Yeah, that's a great example, Jason. I've mentioned this a few times before. Uh, we, we've, we've all referred to, to Zcash a few times before, and there's a lot we can learn from them. Um, one thing that they've done that I think is really unique and interesting is this quote unquote multi-sig on the brand, right, between the electric coin company um, and, and the foundation. And um, I think that there's some interesting ideas there. Like it, it, it's been, it hasn't been all smooth sailing for them. There've been, there was actually like a little bit of a dispute that was resolved last year, but in general, the, the quote unquote multi-sig or like two keys to, to launch the nuke, I think is, is great for accountability. I agree. <laughs> That's a, a great way to frame it. Awesome. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to add or ask um, just kind of around all those all those topics of the foundation and the updates? All right. And, and on that note, does anybody have any additional updates or anything? Um, well, actually, before I get into that, let me go ahead and be mindful of our time here since we're, we're running up towards 745. So our next recurring call is going to be on April 15th, um, the same time of 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. And with that in mind, um, is there anything else that anyone would like to add that we didn't have on the agenda at this time? Uh, yeah, just uh, yes, a comment. I, I got stuck with here the microphone. Um, this accountability issue is 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 um, is racing the, this in, in many aspects. So institutions are in crisis right now, and governments are, uh, are, are also. Um, and crisis in terms of of, of the people don't don't believe uh, on them so so the, all the institutions also they have the same thing and also the in, in the internet arena also the all this ICANN or NICs NICs uh, that they they manage the DNS and also all that also they're getting a lot of uh, pressure uh, from the people they know that the, how they dealing with the, the the management of the domains all that and here also in Chile and different countries around uh, uh, the Americas are also suffering because of that, because they say, okay, they got a lot of uh, resources because they've been managing that. So this accountability issue is, uh, is getting stronger and stronger in terms of how we do that. So that's a quite an important aspect that we had to consider and, uh, and uh, how to deal with that and how how if either if this foundation's got to get resources and how that uh, etc. I don't want to enter to that conversation, but it's it's a very important aspect. Uh, some years before there was no issue about that, but now nowadays is everything is very complicated. Well, I think that's an interesting point, right? Like if we look at um, the, the bigger companies that handle a, a large portion of the internet traffic, like your, your layer threes of the world, um, they're, they're just like this, you know, they all start as a simple concept. And, and as that expands and grows, we gain new abilities. And ideally, if you're, if you're doing it right, then you're going to be entrusted with more and more and more and try and hold up that integrity. So I definitely think that's a good point, Philip, and it, and it ties right into what we're talking about. Now, did um, any, anybody else have anything they'd like to add or, or get into as we're approaching the end here? All right, well, on that note, I definitely thank everybody for being here today. It's a, always a pleasure to go through this and I um, have a whole ton of notes that I will work on uh, publishing up as, as we normally do. Definitely keep an eye on the GitHub for additional resources and especially with um, some of the things that Lane asked for there. And I will look forward to seeing everybody on the next call. Thanks for being a great thanks. host. Yeah, thanks yeah. for hosting. Yeah, thanks for all the work, everybody. Thank you very much. Have a safe week. Definitely. Everybody take care.